Do you know what the most misunderstood organ in the male body is? The prostate! Hey, how did you get in here? I'm gonna say a word, and you tell me the first thing that comes to your mind. Prostate? What is it? <laughs> most people don't know where it is. Lower, somewhere over here. Back here somewhere. I have no <laughs> idea. If they know where it is, they don't know what it does. Uh, it gets cancer and causes me problems as I get older. And if they know what it does, they don't know how it does it. And if finally they know how it does it, they don't know what can go wrong with it. So I'm gonna answer all those questions and more starting now. Do only males have a prostate? I believe so. I, I don't know. That's, is that a trick question? <laughs> Ladies, I'm sorry to say, only guys have a prostate. It causes us a ton of problems. The prostate is a small walnut-sized gland that sits right below your black... Why am I explaining this to you when I can show you, using my trusty sidekick, the male reproductive system? You have the bladder, the rectum, the anus, the prostate, the penis, the urethra, the testicle. That's the prostate. But let me explain to you the flow of urine and sperm because they go exactly through the prostate. That's right. So your urine is stored in the bladder here and then it gets released into the urethra right here and it goes down all the way and out your penis, right? Then you have the ejaculatory duct which comes all the way from around from the testicle and that comes into here and also comes into the urethra. It's like a merging of two highways and when these highways merge, it becomes one path, the urethra, and this is where the sperm and urine both come out from. All right, we'll come back to this. Let's talk about what the prostate actually does. The main job of the prostate is to secrete a milky white fluid that nourishes and protects your sperm. Approximately 30% of your semen is made up of this fluid. This fluid is alkaline or basic, which means that it has a high pH, so it protects the sperm in the acidic environment within the vagina. It basically allows your sperm to reach and fertilize the egg. Fun fact, did you know? Prostatis in Greek literally means protector or guardian. This guy knows his stuff. The prostate needs testosterone, specifically dihydrotestosterone. It needs it to function properly and to mature your prostate when you're younger. But as we'll see later, over time, extended exposure to the hormone can create problems with your prostate. The prostate, just like any other organ, can have things go wrong with it. Most commonly, you'll hear the acronym BPH, and that stands for benign prostatic hyperplasia. Let's take that one word at a time though. Benign, meaning innocent, prostatic, meaning prostate, duh, and hyperplasia, meaning an increase in the number of cells. Basically what happens is, as men age, the prostate gets bigger in size because of new cell creation. Now let me explain that a little bit further with the help of my trusty sidekick. You have a transition area in your prostate, but let me show you up close. This transition zone surrounds the urethra, and the urethra is the area that the urine comes through from the bladder into the penis. So it's this area right here that actually has new cell formation, and those new cells end up putting pressure by pushing onto the urethra, therefore making it difficult for urine to pass through this little tunnel. As you can imagine, this is very uncomfortable as it prevents you from urinating properly. Some common symptoms as a result of this can be excess urination at night, weak stream, dribbling of urine, difficulty urinating, and as a result of this, you can get retained urine in the bladder. And when you have retained urine in the bladder, that can lead to infection, stones, or even bladder rupture. Now, there are treatments to fix this problem, most commonly being medicines. Now, being a family medicine doctor, I often treat people with these medications, and there are two classes of medications that we reach for when we treat benign prosthetic hyperplasia. Number one are those that focus on relaxing the smooth muscle surrounding the urinary tract within the prostate. The second class of medications are ones that focus on blocking the dihydrotestosterone, which makes the prostate increase in size due to the creation of new cells. 
By blocking this, you basically shrink the prostate down. There are also minimally invasive treatments available, utilizing radio waves, lasers, microwaves, and that's why it's important to have a conversation with your doctor if you're facing any one of these issues. Next up, prostate cancer. Number one cancer in males, number two leading cancer death in males. Basically speaking, prostate cancer is an uncontrollable accumulation of abnormal cells. Generally, prostate cancer is diagnosed in men over the age of 50. On autopsy, up to 80% of men over the age of 70 will have some sort of prostate cancer. In fact, most people live with prostate cancer and end up dying from other causes as it's usually a very slow growing cancer. Local or regional prostate cancer has a five-year survival rate of 100% and a 10-year survival rate of 98%, and a 15-year survival rate of 96%. Now, prostate cancers that have spread to other body parts or metastasized to other body parts have a worse survival rate, the five-year survival rate being around 30%. What is metastasis and why is it bad? Well, some of those abnormal prostate cells that are creating the tumor can actually break away from the prostate and travel to other body parts via the blood or lymphatic system. And when that happens, those cells start to proliferate within that area and cause dysfunction. Diagnosis of prostate cancer is made by a combination of imaging plus biopsy. When you get a biopsy, the doctor will get a report back with your Gleason score. The Gleason score goes from two to 10, rating how aggressive your cancer is, with 10 being the most aggressive type. The treatment of prostate cancer is decided on a case-by-case -case basis. Recently, we've made a lot of strides in using what we call a period of watchful waiting or active surveillance in non-invasive and low Gleason score tumors. Deciding upon active surveillance or other treatments is a very nuanced matter, and it's really important that you have a healthy line of communication between you and your doctor. The PSA test is a blood test that checks for the prostate-specific antigen within your blood. The PSA is something that both normal and abnormal cells within your prostate secrete. We have a normal range that we expect this number to fall into, and if you have cancer, it's possible that number can go up. Also, if you have an inflamed or enlarged prostate, that number can go up as well. Here's the dilemma with the PSA blood test. You want to catch prostate cancer early if it's an aggressive cancer because the earlier you catch it, the better your chances of survival. A large percentage of prostate cancers that we find using PSAs would have never caused symptoms for patients within their lifetimes. So on one hand, you want to catch as many cancers, aggressive cancers as you can that you can treat. And on the other hand, you don't want to catch cancers that are not necessarily gonna do any harm. There is no universal recommendation on who should get a PSA test. This is because the test can carry some benefit, but can also carry significant harms. If the test comes up positive, you can be overdiagnosed with prostate cancer, meaning that you'll find a cancer that would have never caused you any problems in your lifetime. You could also get a false positive, leading to a biopsy that wasn't necessary and carries its own set of complications. And worst of all, at least worst of all in my opinion, you can get a false negative which means that you actually have a cancer, but the test falsely reassures you that you do not. Being a family medicine doctor, I firmly believe in prevention. I, I wanna prevent problems before they happen. I wanna catch cancers early and be as aggressive as possible, but I wanna make sure I do that without increasing the harms over the benefits. In my opinion, I think PSA testing is just too much of an imperfect tool to recommend it to my patients. I think that the PSA test is inaccurate because at times it can be falsely elevated with inflammation or an enlarged prostate, which occurs with to many men as they age. You can have low readings because of obesity or certain medications you take. So I don't want to expose my patients to unnecessary harms unless I'm certain of the benefits. That doesn't mean you shouldn't get your PSA checked. What it does mean is that you should have a very, very 
specific conversation with your doctor on whether or not this test is right for you. I've had patients say, but I have a family history. Shouldn't I get a PSA test at this specific age or at this specific age? And the answer is probably not. But then again, we just don't know the answer to it because we don't have the proper research to give you an honest answer. And again, I've said this before, a good expert knows when to say, I don't know. There exists another preventive measure that's very commonly associated with prostate cancer, and that's the DRE, the digital rectal exam. And it's exactly what you think it is. It's a digit, a finger from the behind to make sure that the prostate doesn't have any masses, it doesn't have an unusual shape, it's not larger than normal. While this test is widely used, its evidence for finding cancers and for extending life is relatively weak. Now, that doesn't mean the test is useless because it definitely has some utility, but it's important that you discuss with your doctor whether or not you need the prostate exam or if it's something you can pass on. This has been the prostate in a nutshell, specifically a walnut nutshell, because the prostate is the size of a, you guessed it, a walnut. My goal in making this video is not to scare you. It's to empower you to make quality healthcare decisions for yourself or your family members. I've worked with the Movember Foundation. I've worked with the Prostate Cancer Foundation. Recently just did the Blue Jacket Fashion Show with them for Men's Fashion Week. If you want some more information about prostate cancer or the prostate in general, I'm putting some links down below in the description box. If you learned something from this video, please give it a like. Share it with your friends and family because we could all benefit from some extra medical knowledge. And as always, if you have a question or a unique experience with prostate cancer, leave it down below in the comments. As always, stay happy and healthy.